Hello and welcome to a Star Citizen CitizenCon 2017 summary. The event lasted all day and there was some pretty cool stuff on show. I'll start with the big ones from the end of the day presentation that they had. They showcased procedural cities, an entire planet, Arc Corp, covered in city. It was populated by NPCs, the demo was done live, um, it was seamless transition from ground to space. Everything was visible and actually tangibly there. And um, if you saw it on the horizon or from orbit, it was that was actually there on the planet. Um, they also went on to show that not only is the exterior of the city uh, can be procedurally generated, but the internals potentially as well. So we could be looking at fully explorable cities in the game. They want to use this um, to help flesh out large systems, new planets, city planets, all these um, things in game that they won't necessarily be able to do at the scale or level they want if they had to do it all by hand. So the demo showed off the improvements to the engine, both graphically and the performance as well. Modular space stations they showed, although it was just the externals. They also showed off another planet with different aesthetics in the Stanton system, Hurston, which has different city type, different biomes, where um, Arc Corp is this like sprawling metropolis. Hurston is much more sparse, but uh, very much more industrialized, dirty, has oceans as well. And water in game, they showed, well, they didn't show it having wave simulation, it's going to be fully wave simulated. They kind of hovered up quite far above it at the moment. The whole thing was extremely impressive to see. And at the end, they showed off some flora and fauna, little alien critters, oni crabs. The servers were populated with NPCs everywhere going about whatever they were doing. They haven't got those 24 hour schedules in yet, but eventually, 24 hour schedules for each of those NPCs, they all have their own unique AI effectively or personality in some way. Other cool things shown during that particular presentation were the differences in engine trails from space compared to atmosphere and also they want to have meaningful travel times between distances when you're quantum traveling so arc corp to hurston was around eight minutes and during that eight minutes they showed a picture in picture they, uh, they of the actual ship traveling but they showed the tools for city generation and interiors and how they worked during that time there was also some um, words on the release models and patches moving forward and into 2018 expect date driven releases for the alphas with quarterly releases they will be heavily updating the schedule report they were giving us an expanded star citizen roadmap which is going to be added after 3.0 goes live so expect to see rough plans for patches mechanics and all of that jazz leading up to 4.0 or beta um, squadron 42 episode 1 will be added to the schedule report during the holiday live stream and will be the focus of that december live stream as well squadron 42 there will also be ship sales during the anniversary live stream in november for those of you that are looking to pick up ships because there are no real Real big sales or anything here although there were some things that went on sale the pioneer um, there was a limited amount of them pre-sold to concierge the day before and then another 2000 1000 in warbond and 1000 for store credit um, and as of writing this i think there were only 600 warbond variants left of it um, it's a 850 dollar ship incredibly expensive the ship itself though is an outpost and base building factory that can be used literally to manufacture modular buildings for your needs in game and even store them for a while if you need them to. Um, so you will need resources on board for the construction. Buildings in bases will act similarly to ships requiring power and life support, but also have functional use. Habitation, armory, storage, med stations, mining and refining, hydroponics, ore and gas extraction, solar panels, moisture extractors, geothermal heat pumps, uh, landing pads, turrets, and much, much more. So you're going to have these fully functional bases that you're going to be using to extract materials or using as a hideout or um, using to actually build things there. So you'll be able to use these for um, drug manufacture, science research, or many, many other tasks. So there's also a kind of land claim kind of mechanic as well. You'll need land to place your base in UEE space, so secure UEE space. You have to do that via a land claim, which will cost you some UEC. Uh, in less secure space, you're going to be able to go much more freeform without one. Um, so whatever you decide, you'll want to scout out and find information about the land before you're building a base there. How flat is it? How much room have you got? Uh, what resources are available there? And um, are there any facilities near the, that you can use? Setting up a mining operation obviously requires you to find the resource that you want to extract nearby, but also can be made much more efficient if you also build refineries there and or, or have access to nearby refineries from a friendly base or someone else's. You'll be able to build defenses, get NPCs to guard and patrol, 
and have other players help you keep your base safe. Base building will be a huge part of the gameplay in Star Citizen, but as I'm sure some people will be much more into just the spaceship stuff rather than the procedural planets and the base building things. It was a great um, keynote presentation showing what we can do on planet surfaces in the future. Some other cool stuff that they showed. Um, My Radar has an app now for the phones, for real life phones, allowing you to see weather uh, in moons in Alpha 3.0, so Yella, Daymar, and Selin. Uh, it's cool and simulated, and I hope it gets fully integrated into the game at some point as a Moby Glass app. I'm assuming that's what the uh, that's what will happen. Um, it's available now to use for people that can't wait for 3.0 and want to see some cool data. One of the presentations as well there showed animation tech, uh, specifically re in regards to procedural animations for negotiating terrain. This allows players and NPCs to move over rough terrain and small obstacles in a smart manner, generating appropriate animations on the fly. It looks fantastic, especially when combined with footprints being left on the ground and their IK system preventing clipping uh, by aligning your feet and body uh, to the ground on rough terrain and stairs and that sort of thing too. So you actually are moving in a, a sensible, realistic looking manner. They have also released a series on how to learn the Xi'an language with videos and documentation. It's a real in-depth language now. For those of you who want to, to learn that, um, check out the links below. Intel have been giving Star Citizen a lot of support and they've more officially announced their Intel 900p Optane drivers that come exclusively with the Sabre Raven and a game package. So the drives are extremely fast SSDs, but extremely expensive at the moment. They are $390 for the 240 gig version and up to $600 dollars for the 480 gig variants uh, and they can be placed in your, your m2 slots as long as you've got a u2 conversion cable or uh, it's directly into a pci express slot um so the raven is a infiltrator saber which basically it's a saber with a lower signature and loads of weapons cut down in it it has two size three weapons and two Maxox burst EMP generators, giving it quite a unique loadout. These aren't missiles or anything, these are actually, um, these generate little mini M EMPs, I believe. It's the second exclusive ship that CIG have ever made, the first being the AMD Mustang Omega. If you're after one of these drives, or the Sabre Raven, it's pretty hard to get hold of them at the moment. There should be some better distribution coming in the uh, future days. The Raven is going to be flyable in Alpha 3.0 as well, which was another little surprise. It's a cool looking ship, um, it's not going to be game breaking or anything and people with um, uh, just a standard Sabre are probably going to be pretty happy with their Sabre. Uh, they did talk about optimization of the game as well, of which they're doing a lot of it recently. Uh, they said that their Vulcan integration doesn't actually necessarily ignore DirectX 12, um, which may well uh, be fully integrated into the game as well. The game will be optimized for many CPU threads in the future, and they're going to keep on adding graphical and performance improvements too. They did go into much more of how they generate frames and exactly what optimizations and stuff they'll be looking at uh, but I will uh, I'll put links to that below um, and that's kind of it for the summary of CitizenCon it's one of the best events they've ever done by far it was went very well there were very few mistakes done by CIG and everything they showed was pretty pretty spot on if you want to see the full presentation or any particular panel um, as there were there were a few I will put links down below to uh, Star Citizen's official uh, CitizenCon playlist of each of the individual events uh, and I will put my gameplay cut of the procedural cities demo down there as well for people that want to just see prettiness. Every month we give away a ship for October. It's a Constellation Aquila with Urza Rover and P-52 Snubfighter, donated by our featured org, Stellar Enterprise. Links below if you're interested in joining the organisation. See if they're right for you. Uh, all you need to do is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my Star Citizen videos during that particular month. Do you have any questions about CitizenCon, about anything that was shown, about Star Citizen's development in general, or out for 3.0? Anything else we talked about? A special thank you to my Patreons for allowing me to create the amount of content I do. Thank you so much. If you're interested in becoming one of them, there is a link to Patreon below, um, as well as everything else we've talked about. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, as it really does help me, and I will see you in the verse. <laughs>